Konnichiwa and welcome back to my channel. Today's vlog is going to be very helpful for our fellow Filipino who are planning to visit the beautiful country of Japan. We will be discussing kung ano ba yung visa requirements, tips, saan kaming travel agency nag-apply, and of course, how much. So make sure to stick around to know more. Let's get started! First things first, you need to know what type of visa yung kailangan nyo. Kasi merong for tourists, merong for business, mga ganyan. So in our case, ang in namin is of course for tourists. And yun yung i-discuss ko sa inyo today since itong topic natin about yung our own experience. Now let's talk about the necessary documents because I got you. Meron akong cheat sheet dito. <laughs> Balik kumuha ako dun sa pinag-apply namin na travel agents. May pa-paper sila na ganito. So for tourism, number one, requirement is of course the Philippine passport. So dapat hindi siyempre sira yung passport nyo na sa maayos na kalagayan. Passport must be signed. Kung yung kalimutan sa may harapan, meron kayong pipirmahan doon. And of course, doon sa likod for emergency contact. And must have at least two blank pages kasi doon nila ilalagay yung visa mo if in case na ma-approve ka. Second requirement is of course the visa application. Ito yung next na importante kasi kaya ka nga mag-apply ng Japan visa, di ba? So, kailangan meron kang visa application form. And take note is ito yung mga dapat nyo tandaan when it comes doon sa visa form kasi medyo sensitive yung form na to. Dapat talagang maayos yung pag-fill out mo, okay? So, number one, black pen only. So, hindi pwedeng blue, hindi pwedeng brown, hindi pwedeng red. Sabi dito, black pen only. Kasi kapag hindi nyo sinunod, may tendency na hindi, baka hindi kayo ma-approve. Kaya dapat behave tayo, nagpo-follow tayo sa instructions. And then second, dapat walang blank yung form nyo. If in case na wala kayong answer dun sa tanong, ilalagay nyo NA. Hindi pwedeng blank. Kasi possible, ma-reject kayo. Wala rin dapat erasure, so iwasan natin yan. If kagaya nyo kami na nag-apply via online, pwede kayo mag-print na mag-print. <laughs> Mag-practice kayo na mag-practice, diba? Para hindi kayo magkamali. Handwritten or ipiprint. In our case, pinrint out namin yung mga form. Kasi ang pangit ang sulat namin. Or kami lang ng ate ko. Kasi so, ang pangit ang sulat ko, muntik na talaga ako mag-doktor. Kaya sabi ko, kailangan nilang maintindihan yung mga details ko. So, napag-decisionan ko na, na iprint ko na lang yung form. Yung mga kasama ko din, nagprint na lang din sila para safe. And, yung advantage kasi kapag, di ba, tinipe siya sa computer, malinis talaga yung phone. And, and pa nagkamali ka, hindi na mag-erasure-erasure, no? Iba-backspace mo na lang. So, yun ang aking advice. Third, keep meron itong specific size na sinusunod as standard. Ililink ko below kung saan nyo pwedeng makuha yung copy ng correct visa application form para hindi kayo magkamali. And then, number three for our requirements is photo. It must be a passport size. Ang sabi dito, dapat 44mm by 35mm with white background and no eyeglasses. Minimal makeup. Eye. Additional note for your photo, you have to make sure that photo was taken within 6 months. So, dapat updated, guys. Bawal yung tipong college pa kayo, isasummit nyo kasi dun kayo parang medyo payat-payat pa. Hindi <laughs> na pwede yan, guys. So, barang outdated na nun. Magtigil kayo dyan. I highly suggest for you to wear yung may something like collar. Pero if wala, yung studio naman na magpipicture sa inyo, alam na nila yan, nilalagyan na nila nung parang digital lang na pa-formal Emmy. Pero may mga nabasa kasi ako na yung iba, hindi tinatanggap yun. Pero para na lang safe, magsuot na lang kayo ng may collar. Pero sa case kasi namin, kami, Chris, nagsuot kami nung legit na may collar na damit, polo shirt. Tapos si ate, and si Kuya Dennis. Nagpa-edit lang sila dun sa photo studio. Up to you guys kung ano yung isasubmit yung photo. Pero in our case, tinanggap naman parehas. And then, once na meron na kayong photo, sa likod ng photo yung, syempre, yung likod. So, kailangan nyo yung sulatan ng name nyo sa likod and then birthday. Tapos, ipipaste nyo dun sa visa application form. Number four requirement is your birth certificate. It should be issued by PSA within one year. Kami kumuha via online lang. Mabilis lang guys, parang less than a week. Na-deliver na rin sa amin agad yung birth certificate. I-flash ko na lang dito sa screen kung magkano kasi nakalimutan ko na. Pero nagbayad ako via GCash. So, very easy lang siya guys kasi online lang namin siya ginawa. And na-deliver naman agad. Additional note, if in case late registration kayo, you must submit baptismal certificate and school record form 137. Another one, if there is no record or birth in the PSA, submit a birth certificate issued by the local civil registrar and negative certificate issued by PSA. So, may mga options naman guys if in case na may problema kayo sa birth certificate nyo. Makapunta pa rin kayo ng Japan. 
Number 5 requirement is your itinerary in Japan. Ito guys, ano lang naman, simple itinerary, hindi naman yung tipong sobrang detailed. Kailangan lang nila makita kung ano ba yung mga plano mo sa Japan. If you nag apply ka nga ng tourist, syempre kailangan nila ma-feel na tourista ka talaga, hindi ka magti-TNT doon. So, huwag nyo masyadong OOA yan, yung simple lang. Pero yung totoong pupuntahan nyo naman, basta may sample ako. If you want, you can message me sa Instagram para isend ko sa inyo yung format nung sinamit namin. So, syempre effective yun kasi na-approve nga, diba? I got Additional note, meron silang standard format. So, ililink ko din below para makuha nyo yung form na dapat sagutan nyo. Meron silang table format kasi and that's standard. So, you have to follow. Number six requirement is for married people. Okay, so pag married ka, syempre meron kang... Comment below. Chok. Marriage certificate. So, kailangan nyo rin mag-submit nyan. Issued by PSA within one year as well. So, same thing lang dun sa birth certificate. If you have no record for marriage certificate, you have to submit marriage certificate issued by the local civil registrar and negative certificate issued by PSA. Number seven. Personal bank certificate. Must be original. Ito na. Ito maraming tanong dito, guys. Okay. So, magbibigyan ako ng dalawang sample sa inyo. Kasi in our case, submit kami ng galing sa digital bank and dun sa traditional bank. Explain ko sa inyo. So, for the traditional bank, ito yung medyo alam na ng lahat. So, pupunta kayo physically dun sa banko nyo. For example, in our case, ang mga na-experience ay BPI, Metro Bank. And sa akin, ginamit ko kasi is online, which is CIMB. Sobrang dali lang, guys. Ang CIMB kasi is online bank. If may kailangan kayong mga ganyan, bank certificate, one click away lang nasa application lahat. In-email lang sa akin and then ako na yung nag-print. It's considered as original kasi meron yung sign. Basta may sign yun ng CIMB. So, it's legit, guys. Gumana siya. Yung mga kasama ko, naglaan pa sila ng araw para pumunta dun sa mga bangko nila. Pila-pila pa sila. Nagbayad pa sila kasi sa bank, may bayad yung pag-print. Okay? So, sa BPI, ito yung presyo. And then, sa Metro Bank, ito naman yung presyo. Diba? But sa CIMB, ito ang presyo. Zero. Wala kang binayaran. So, number eight is the income tax return. Form 2316 or Form 1701. Ito naman guys, hindi naman kailangan original copy. Kahit um, photocopy lang, basta malinaw. Must have the amount of gross income and a stamp of recipient BIR. Additional note for ITR 2316 must be signed by the employee and the employer. Kasi pag wala, possible, baka ma-reject. So, dapat i-follow na lang natin, okay? If naman magpapasa kayo ng ITR 1701, must have receipt stamp of the tax collector, which is BIR, or receipt of payment if there's no BIR stamp. Email confirmation if payment is done online. Another thing to discuss under the income tax return, if tax is not withheld, for example, ano ka, um, self-employed, housewife, retired. So, pag ganun kayo, guys, may additional requirement kayo na isasubmit. Okay? So, sa mga hindi na makarelate dyan, ama na. Hindi nyo na kailangan tong part na to. Skip nyo na to. Char. So, didiscuss ko lang to dun sa mga makakarelate. Okay? Ito yung additional requirements. If ITR is not available and there is no ADB or average daily balance, on the bank certificate, you must submit two items. Number one, you have to submit your bank statement to prove transaction for the past three months. Number two, explanation letter for non-submission of ITR. So, those are the requirements na you have to submit if you are going to pay all of your travel expenses. Now, let's discuss if you have a sugar daddy chart. If you have a sponsor or a guarantor. If yung guarantor nyo is a Filipino, ito yung mga requirements. So, number 9, guarantee letter. Must be original. Number 10, Proof of relationship between the applicant and the guarantor. Hindi nyo sila pwedeng dayain, guys. Dapat may proof kayo. Number 11, guarantor's personal bank certificate. Number 12, guarantor's income tax return. And that's it, guys, for the additional notes. I-flash ko na lang dito sa screen kasi medyo mahaba na siya. I-pause nyo na lang para basahin nyo. Ito yung mga dapat nyong tandaan. And 
and the reveal kung saan ba kami nag-apply ng Japan visa namin. Ayun na nga guys, nag-apply kami sa UHI Universal Holidays Incorporated. Located sila sa my ground floor ng Dusitani, Makari City. For the visa application, nag-apply kami via online. Ililink ko below yung website kung saan kayo pwede mag-apply via online. If kagaya nyo kami na medyo busy sa work. Since weekdays lang nag accept si UHI, we decided to apply via online, which is much better for us. Sa schedule namin, pasok siya kasi nga, pwede nyo gawin sa bahay lang, diba? Anytime na gusto nyo mag-apply. Tapos, ito pa yung pinakabongga. Nung time na nag-apply kami, meron silang promo for multiple entry visa na 700 pesos lang. Okay? So, sa normal pricing kasi niyan, ito siya. And, ang laki ng naging savings namin, diba? Ayun nga, nag-try kami mag-apply ng multiple entry. Additional note pala, guys, if in case na gusto nyo mag-ME, you have to submit um, another form for that. Ililink ko below. Once you submitted your application, of course, there is a waiting period. You have to be patient at this point. Hindi pwedeng ginaji kayo. Tamang dasal lang na ma-approve ka nun. Tamang ka lang for ilang araw. And habang naghihintay kayo sa result, gamitin nyo yung oras para magplano ng mga gusto nyong gawin sa Japan. Diba? Kasi mabaliw ka kakaisip kung pumasa ka ba, na-approve ka ba or hindi. Siyempre, ma-manifest natin yan. You can also book yung mga tickets nyo, mga entrance tickets nyo, activities via Kuluk. You can use our promo code here to have additional 5% off. Ito yung code namin, WTV. Gamitin nyo yan guys para naman makatipid kayo. And then ito na, dumating na tayo sa exciting part. Yung available na yung aming visa. Doon sa website or doon sa app, manonotify kasi kayo or may kita nyo nakasulat doon kung nasa na yung visa application nyo. Dumating na tayo sa exciting part. Na-receive na namin yung notification na available na yung passport namin sa UHI. Nag-avail kami to have it delivered to our home instead of going to uh, Makati kasi nga, syempre, busy nga ang mga first one. Para at least, hindi na kayo lalabas ng bahay kasi medyo mahal din papuntang Makati magtotol pa kayo, ganun, di ba? South problem. So, pinadeliver na lang namin. Kaso, ang catch nun, guys, parang mga 2 days delay. Instead na pwede nyo nang kunin agad sa office ng Makati, kung sakali na mamadali kayo, ang suggestion ko, wag na kayo mag-avail nung deliver sa bahay nyo. Punta kayo na doon diretso. Anyway, ang binayaran lang naman namin is ito. Mada-deliver siya via LBC. Kapag via LBC kasi, uh, pwede mo namang matrack yung package kung nasa na. So kami, syempre, excited na excited na kami. Check kami ng check kung nasa na yung ano, package, nasa na. Nasa, ayun. Mabilis lang naman, after 2 days, na-deliver na siya dito sa bahay. So, in our case, na-approve kami ng single entry for 15 days. Happy na rin kasi madenay. Bayad na ang tickets and everything. See you in Japan! By the way, guys, the advantage of applying online is that nag accept sila ng credit card. So, if you like me na cashless person, mas pabor ako na via credit card yung payment na nangyari. Kasi, if pupunta ka dun sa physical office nila sa Makati, normal rate yung babayaran nyo, cash. Cash only yung tinatanggap nila. So, wala sila dung card terminal. And for our next vlog, Pupunta na tayo sa Japan. Siyempre, ibabalag natin yan. So, make sure to stay tuned and subscribe ka muna para updated ka sa aming mga travel. And that is it for our Japan visa requirements. If you found this vlog helpful, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching! See you in Japan! Visa, ano nyo? Talaga.